What's going on, all you soccer hooligans out there? It's your two favorite coaches back here for Cinefellas. I am Coach Logan Myers. It's my good man over there. I'm Coach Henry Hill. And tonight we're back to coach our soccer team all the way to the championship game. That's right. We're reviewing the Apple TV Plus original series, Ted Lasso. To me, success is not about the wins and losses. It's about helping these young fellas be the best versions of themselves on and off the field. I always figured that tea was just going to taste like hot brown water. And you know what? I was right. Yeah, it's horrible. No, thank you. Welcome to England. And do me a favor tonight, folks. Believe. Believe. Yes. You best believe this is a great show, and this is uh, a show that came out during one of the hardest years of our lives, 2020, during the pandemic. You know, everybody was at home, miserable, sick, you know, going through a lot with the global pandemic. The show comes out, pulls on your heartstrings, great messages, great ensemble, and it just gets better and better. And this is, you know, a time we really needed a show like this. This is a throwback to shows of the 90s and 80s, just like the lighthearted um, sitcom approach, but done in a really cinematic way i'd say like how it's directed and stuff it doesn't feel like a tv show really it has a production value of a a movie really um and yeah this is like the first big hit for apple tv plus ted lasso who would have thought you know this skit um that uh, was a commercial at first with uh, jason sudeikis there as coach ted lasso basically the idea that he was a successful arena football coach and, um, you know, you have this this team, AFC Richmond, that's been down in the dumps for a while and they need somebody to, you know, come and basically save the team and inject some enthusiasm and, you know, show some heart, really. And that's really what Ted Lasso is about. It's about the heart. And it's all led by the man himself, Jason Sudeikis, portraying this character of Ted Lasso, you know, this kind of jokester who's got a lot of great one liners and has a lot of heart. Um, you know, he's always optimistic. He's that kind of coach that's, you know, always looking at the bright side of things, is really good at cheering people up and bringing people together, most of all. All the while, you know, dealing with being a single dad, um, basically his wife having, you know, and him having split up. And now after he's accepted this job all the way across the globe, you know, he has to maintain a relationship with his young son. And that's, you know, a big focus of Ted Lasso as the seasons go on. He's going through a lot early on. And that's what we learn as an audience going through a divorce, moving to another country. The culture's completely different. England's completely different than America. As we find out through the first few episodes and how he's adapting to that. Uh, dealing with anxiety, you know, dealing with a lot of stuff as us as adults, especially during 2020, you know, can relate to this. So Jason Sudeikis diving into this character and seeing how much, you know, how great of a person he is and great of a coach, even though he doesn't know much about soccer or football, you know, keeping his eyes open and learning the game and really has his sidekicks along with him, kind of coaching him as a coach and, you know, really learning the characters. And of course, you know, people in England didn't like Ted Lasso, he's American, and they're calling him a wanker in the first season. And they're like, you suck, go back home to America. And, you know, that must have been tough. But, you know, Ted just kind of shook it off. And he just focused on the team and learned it from the ground up. You know, and really introduces a, a really great supporting cast here with the soccer team, Roy Kent, Jamie Tart, and the list goes on and on. Yeah, what a phenomenal cast of characters. A great all-star cast here that they've assembled for the show, each playing a character that's very memorable in the show. You know, we have Juno Temple as Keeley, um, you know, this business savvy woman who falls in love with one of the players, Jamie Tart. And then as the series goes on, you know, she kind of also falls for Roy Kent. So there's an interesting dynamic between the three of them with Roy and Jamie being arch rivals and them, you know, going after the same woman. Um, and then, you know, eventually coming to like each other and working together, you know, by the end. So really some great character arcs in the show. Um, we have Hannah Waddingham's character, uh, Rebecca, who, you know, is going out with, or, you know, was married to this really rich guy. And uh, after they split up, you know, she's kind of down in the dumps and basically left to try to run this team and, you know, build something from the ground up after her husband's taken everything and he's got his own soccer team, um, you know, that they're going to have to face uh, by the end too. But yeah, it's really, 
Hannah Waddingham really does a great job. This is the first time I saw her and she really owns this role. You know, she just really inhabits this character, this really strong, independent woman who's very business savvy and can really see something um, in Ted as a coach, you know, even though she knows that he doesn't have a lot of, of uh, football experience, she knows that he's the kind of coach that can really bring the team together and, you know, make them a powerhouse. And, and of course, you know, Ted wouldn't be anything without his buddies, like you mentioned, uh, Coach Beard there and Nate too. They all work together in that first season and really, you know, the first season is all about bonding and becoming stronger. And then as the seasons play out, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs too. This isn't like a predictable show to say the least. Although, you know, eventually of course the soccer team was going to get good and, you know, hopefully win it all. That's what everybody's hoping for. But along the way, there's a lot of uh, twists and turns and places where I didn't know a, a, this show like this was going to go. You know, I figured this would be pretty standard sitcom, but it takes you, you know, it, it's really hits home with the dr uh, dramatic parts too and really well fleshed out characters of all, you know, races and religions and creeds. It really gives you a, a global look, you know, being overseas and taking place over there. You get to know a lot of different people. Watching the show, not being a soccer fan or football fan, you know, it made me appreciate the game a little more. It really dives into it, not just, you know, the dramatic side of, of the show with all these characters, but it really shows the players and what they go through, like any athlete. And then it's not an easy job. One by one, you get to get introduced to the, the soccer team and, you know, what they're all about, their their backstories and things like that. A few of my favorites were, were Sam. I like Sam in this uh, series is really good. Colin, um, I think in the season three, talking about his sexuality was really good. Um, and then, you know, other players that show up along the way. It really maintains its excellence throughout the three seasons it was on. It didn't overstay its welcome like a lot of shows. It felt appropriate to end where it did, too, in those three seasons. It really, everybody had a chance to grow up and, uh, you know, really complete their character arcs. You see people go from uh, being the hated people to people that you really love and care about. And that's, you know, a testament to the acting and the performances on this show too, as well. You know, everybody's fantastic. Brett Goldstein as Roy Kent, you know, you know, just in those three seasons, he's one of the, the most, you know, all time memorable TV characters. You know, I'm, I'm always going to remember his character just being this, you know, kind of grumpy dude. And then eventually coming around and being somebody that, you know, you could tell, that he wears his, you know, his heart on his sleeve. He kind of hides it, but uh, he, he'd really do anything for his friends and, and loved ones. And then Jamie Tart, you know, you, you really hate him in the beginning. And then over the series, you learn that, you know, he has issues with his dad. There's a lot of reasons why he's messed up and kind of acts crazy like he does and can be unlikable. But, uh, you know, everybody, everybody kind of goes through their stuff. And then even like a character like Nate, how they kind of did the uh, go, him going to the dark side kind of felt like, uh, you know, a nod to Star Wars there. Yeah. Especially in that episode where he kind of breaks bad and you, you see him kind of deteriorate and then start going against, you know, what he was for when he was with uh, Ted Lasso on the team. He kind of takes the opposite approach and gets really egotistical and it sets up a pretty cool dynamic between, you know, him coaching against Ted. That was like more in season three where he kind of goes to the dark side. He goes to the opposing team and he's a coach and he's kind of a douchebag and like every 90s or 80s or 90s movie, the bad guy. Uh, but, he, you know, eventually sees the way and he goes back to his roots where he returns and, you know, patches everything up with the team and stuff like that. But I really like Nate a lot. I've never seen him, the actor, in anything else besides mm -hmm. this. But I thought he was really fantastic. It really added uh, some great chemistry with other coaches, uh, Beard being one of my favorites. And then, of course, Roy Kent, when he becomes a coach, too, in season two and three. Starts off as a player, and then he eventually coaches, and I love them. And they introduced Diamond Dogs, if you remember that. Oh, yeah, the Diamond Dogs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they just had all these, you know, great uh, names for each other, and the same kind of chemistry that we have as friends, you know, they, they really bring that into that show. It really does feel like a close knit family and they're really, they really feel like they're, you know, real life friends, the way that they're able to write that and give depth to all these characters. Everybody is really fleshed out. There's not a character that feels like they're thrown by the wayside. They really made sure to build these characters up and, uh, you know, send them off in style by the time the show is over, you know, there's a lot of interesting character arcs, as I've said, um, a lot of memorable um, scenes. And uh, one of my favorite locations in the show was the pub 
where you know you had the lady, the barkeep, and then you had the the hooligans that were always cheering for AFC Richmond in there. And there were some memorable scenes with them getting really drunk and rowdy as the team, you know, lost and then started to win. There were some fun scenes in that. It was May, and then the three pub boys, <laughs> the three guys that were always there drinking and trying to root them on and like questioning them and and uh making fun of them but they yeah they were really fantastic in the series too always popping up in different episodes and showing up at the games towards the end you know when the team gets better and they start learning to play better together as a team and from you know ted lasso's coaching everybody that shows up in the show that you care about each character in england all different personalities but it all works it all meshes well together it really makes you care about these characters and what ted lasso is trying to accomplish with this team that was heading down the shitter and it kind of brings them back together and teaches them how to focus and not be so hard on themselves and, you know, appreciate the game and look at life and the good things that are there for you. So a lot of great messages in this and, you know, Jason Sudeikis, always a fantastic actor, really great comedic actor. And I loved him in this and definitely worth all the Emmys that they received for this show. Yeah, I agree with you. This show deserves all the accolades it's one of those shows you can throw on and it'll always make you feel better. It's one of those shows. Perfect episode length, 20 to 30 minutes, a nice quick binge. You could get this done in a couple of days. And uh, th- this is a show that really is uplifting. And you really start to believe, like Ted Lasso preaches in there, you start to believe in yourself. It's got a good message. And uh, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite shows of the past five years, but one of my favorite shows ever, probably when it's all said and done and how they were able to do all that in just a few, you know, seasons of TV, you know, usually shows go on too long, far too long, but this one ended uh, relatively soon. And that's fine with me. The way they wrapped it up was perfect. And who knows, we might be getting some spinoffs here because they give some, some hints uh, in that final episode of where it could go, maybe focus on some of the other characters. I think probably Sudeikis is probably done as Ted Lasso, but, uh, you know, even something with the other coaches that are left with Roy and uh, Beard and Jamie and all those characters, I, I wouldn't mind seeing them. Or even, you know, a show for Rebecca or Keeley. I'd watch that, too. Anything. They could do a lot of things in this universe. Uh, but really, you know, it's about Ted Lasso. And yes, it was just a great show. Yeah, I could definitely see, you know, a Juno Temple, you know, coming off Fargo and her kind of blowing up right now. I'd love to see a spin off with her and Rebecca and a Waddingham like together being successful mm-hmm. women and driven and not needing men to be successful. I could I'd totally love to watch a show, Apple TV plus about them. Of course the coaches, Roy and everybody, yeah, they could do a lot with this, but finale of season three, it was kind of unexpected. Like people weren't aware that, Hey, this is the end, but after watching it, you figure it out. So that's kind of cool how mm-hmm. they did all that. They could have went on for uh farther, but yeah, I think they ended it perfectly. They didn't want to, bleed it dry and they wanted to go out on a high note and that's really what they were able to do season three some people liked it some didn't but i thought season three was well ironed out and i thought it was really a fantastic ending but overall as a whole ted lasso was a fantastic show on apple tv plus original really had a great time with this a lot of great messages a lot of things that you can take out of the show on top of the great ensemble here you know the writing's amazing directing's amazing the showrunners creators everybody involved in this and that's why they won so many Emmy Awards for the show and three seasons you're really going to get attached to these characters even if you're not a soccer fan like myself I think you're really going to enjoy this and and get something out of this with your friends and families if you haven't seen it definitely check it out it's currently streaming on Apple TV Plus I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five Jason Sudeikis hair pieces after everything I've said Ted Lasso is just an amazing show one of my favorites of all time Ted Lasso for me is a five out of five beard hair pieces. <laughs> yeah, it's a good looking show too. The way it's filmed, cinematography, the music's great. Yeah. The intro, the theme song, the opening is one of my Marcus favorite Marcus Mumford. Marcus Mumford. Yay! <laughs> so we want to hear from you guys. What did you guys think of Ted Lasso on Apple TV Plus? Did you guys love it as much as us? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to kick subscribe also follow along with these wild boys all over social media facebook instagram and x for the latest and greatest in tv movie news and reviews also make sure to check out our website cinefellas.com and make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel as we mentioned and follow along with us all week we post multiple reviews uh you know things new and old 
we'll say we go back and we go back in time sometimes and review some things that we've been wanting to talk about. And we like to, uh, you know, catch up on series and binge them and then review the entire run like we're doing for Ted Lasso. So stay tuned for more. Oh, yeah. We always got some hot content coming out right here on our YouTube channel. I mean, this guy talking about new and old TV and movies. And, of course, we got the Cinefellas podcast coming up this weekend with the entire crew talking about some video games, movies, Oscars coming up and, and much, much more. Oh, well, that's it for us here. We're going to head out on to the soccer field and. Go share a pint with those wild hooligans out there. So I'll see you later. I'm Uncle Henry Hill. And I'm Uncle Marcus Mumford signing out until the next TV <laughs> review. Yeah. Gee.